This episode of Study Hall is brought to you by Audible. Yar har 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 har. Ahoy there, landlubbers. Today I'll be telling you the tale of our Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. The one about the pirates. Avast, mateys, and welcome aboard Study Hall. I'm your captain, Max Scoville, and of course, Study Hall is the show where I talk about all the history and art and pop culture and so on that surrounds video games as a medium, suggesting some new stuff that'll keep you entertained when you're not playing games, and all the while making you a more worldly and well-rounded individual. Today's topic is one that is ripe for discussion, Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag, which is of course all about Pirates of the Caribbean. Not like you know, Johnny Depp and Orlando Bloom are the guys at Disneyland, but the actual ones. And obviously, in addition to the actual history, there's a ton of fiction about them out there. However, for this episode, I decided to try something new, and I went directly to the source, the games director, Ash Ismail, to ask him about what books, movies, historical stuff, and other games the team at Ubisoft Montreal drew inspiration from. And worry not, I'll have a few recommendations of my own after we get back. But in the meantime, take it away, Max. da 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 Thank you, Max. That's right, I'm here with Ash, who is the game director for Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag, which is a game about pirates. Yep. Why did you make a game about pirates? Uh, well, you know, it was, um, I always describe it as it was kind of a perfect storm of events that happened all at once. Uh, you know, we had uh, AC3 was starting to push this naval concept, and we saw the first early prototypes of it, and it was super exciting. Uh, at the same time, we've always had this character of Edward Kenway, who is the, the, the father of, of Connor, uh, the father of Hytham and grandfather Connor. So we've always had this character in the brand, we just didn't know how we were going to use him. Uh, at the same time, again, AC3 pushed navigating in uh, natural environments, so on trees and that kind of stuff. And through all of this, and at some point, someone had brought up pirates, and at some point when we sat down to really discuss what is AC4 going to be about, with all this in front of us, it was kind of slapping us in the face, we're doing a pirate game. And it wasn't even a debate, it wasn't a discussion, it was literally, so we're gonna do a pirate game? And the upper management approved it. It was, it, was, it was very smooth and very seamless. And then, as soon as we made that decision, we started looking into the history, and what we found was, uh, uh, like, the actual history of piracy was, was really gritty, it was really interesting, a lot of cool events happened, a lot of really bigger than life, real historic figures existed and did some amazing things like Blackbeard and Charles Vane. And so we felt that there was this huge opening in, in, in the media, in, uh, in, in entertainment, to tell this gritty version of piracy. Because it's been very romanticized up to yeah, this point. Yeah, it's always been sort of a, a thing for kids. You've got, you know, you've got Johnny Depp and you've got... Uh, exactly, you Treasure know, Island. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, historically, it was, it was kind of grisly. It, so, it, was, it was this insane you know, attempt at a democracy yeah. by these people that, that, you know, uh, that stole and drank and gambled. And, and, but they attempted a democracy, they attempted a, a republic, and it, it failed miserably. So we felt that as a backdrop to telling an AC tale, because at the end of the day, it is an AC game. Uh, this was a really cool backdrop. Lots of really interesting events and interesting figures that we wanted to be part of the story. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, to be able to do uh, like this really huge naval sandboxy open world, that was also something that was exciting for us because we knew we were going to ship on next gen. Right. So this was another thing that we felt that we needed to bring something new, something innovative, uh, because you know that's I think the right, expectations right. people have with next gen, and so the world we wanted to create was kind of something big and sandboxy, and so we felt again it was another feather in the hat of doing a pirate game. When making Black Flag, what materials did you guys draw from primarily? Uh, one of the first resources we looked into it's a it's a novel called The Republic of Pirates. Uh, so this this told a very gritty version of these people and these events that took place the, to create this republic and then the subsequent fall of this republic or the attempted republic. So definitely Republic of Pirates. Um, but you know we also we actually had in a lot of uh, a lot of historians come in. So uh, example is a man named Mike Lodes. Uh, he's a weapons expert from that time period. So he came in and he talked about how boarding worked. He talked about how the weapons were used, how the flintlock pistols were used. And so this was really exciting for us and we incorporated a lot of that stuff into the boarding system. Uh, that's actually where Edward having four guns comes from. It's actually from the discussions with Mike. Huh. Yeah, so pirates yeah, exactly. would actually have four guns? Yeah, yeah. Pirates actually carried multiple pistols because they needed to, yeah. as soon as you go into a boarding, you don't have time to reload. You don't, so you just take one shot, drop the gun, pick yeah. up another one. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what about kind of more, more modern popular culture? Were there any movies that inspired you guys? Uh, most definitely, uh, you know, obviously uh, Master and Commander, awesome reference. 
Uh, there was a amazing naval combat, there was an amazing boarding sequence in there. We actually referenced the specific boarding sequences from Master and Commander. Uh, at some point there was a, a storm and fog cycles that we mm. actually used as, as good visuals for what we wanted, visual benchmarks. Uh, so for sure Master and Commander. Um, beyond that, I mean, uh, we also looked at comic books and, and other stories. Uh, uh, Any comics that, that <laughs> people should check out? Yeah, uh, I mean, there was a, a French comic from the 80s uh, called uh, Captain uh, Albator. So this was a kind of a space, uh, space pirate captain. Uh, his ship was able to transform into various things. At some point it transformed into a flying uh, airship. Uh, but we referenced it from a perspective of what can a ship do? What could be fun in a video game? I mean, you know, Assassin's Creed, we, we take credibility and authenticity to our heart. It's part of our brand. But it still has to be fun. It can't but it just has be, to be yeah. fun. So that's the thing. Assassin's Creed is not realistic and it's not simulation. It's credible and it's authentic. Yeah. And the, the balance there is, you know, we try to stay true to history when, when the history is obvious. Right. We let ourselves have a bit of room to, to fudge things when, when we know the details are a bit more sketchy. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's a game. It needs to be fun. Uh, for example, the sailing in our game, I think people will say it's a very credible sailing. The ocean feels good. You feel like you're driving this big, heavy ship. The way it turns feels accurate, but it's... But it was still inspired in part by a space pirate transforming ship on some level. Why not? Well, let's uh, no, let's I mean, yeah, but you've got to, you kind of got to look at things, and it, it's easy to take kind of exactly. game mechanics from other sources. Now, exactly. obviously, you guys have... You make games, so you have a background in games. Were there any games that you looked at that really kind of inspired you yeah, uh, mechanically. Tons of games. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we looked at Skyrim, for example, for the feeling of exploration, for feeling like there's this big world and there's a lot of stuff in it, and and you're interested in that stuff. Uh, you know, Mario 64. Mario 64, I think, one of the greatest games of all time. The world structure they had, where you have this hub world, with uh, with other worlds that you used a teleport to go into. In our case, the way that transpired is that we have this naval ocean with pockets of islands and caves and forts and all this diversity. And so every time you go to a new place, it's new visuals, it's a new purpose, uh, but you consume it in a really similar way to how Mario 64 was done, actually. Uh, wind Waker, of course, was a good reference to try to look at how was the sailing done, how did the feedback for wind work. Um, how to make boats fun, or maybe how to avoid <laughs> making boats not fun. I, I loved Wind Waker, yeah. you know, I, it, it got some heat for that, but I personally, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, finally I would say Far Cry 3 was actually a massive reference for us because it was a game that we made. A lot of those guys uh, working on Far Cry came mm -hmm. to our team afterwards and, and for sure we, we loved the sandboxy dynamic element of the world. The, the idea that you, you want to go do a main mission, but then you get lost in the world doing hunting, upgrading the character. So this was a huge reference for us and, and I think people when they play Black Flag, they'll, they'll get that feeling. I think it's, it's a bit obvious that it's there and we don't shy away from saying that we referenced our own game. Yeah, well that's totally okay. I mean, it's definitely, you're, you know, you're taking what you learned and carrying it over. Exactly. And it, exactly. it shows. There's palm trees and you can kill endangered species. <laughs> Ash, thanks so much for chatting. Peter loves us. Black Flag looks rad. My Max, pleasure. back to you. Well, wasn't that nice? Ash was great to talk to and he seemed to be very relieved to be taking a break from answering the same five PR-laden questions about Assassin's Creed 4 repeatedly. Uh, now, for some recommendations of my own, uh, I think we mentioned that in there, but Treasure Island. I, I gotta recommend it again. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, the prototypical pirate adventure novel. Pretty much all the pirate cliches come from here. The language, the parrots, the peg legs, the treasure maps with the X marking the spot. It all started here back in 1883. If you'd like to check out Treasure Island for yourself, but you don't feel like reading a bunch of words, why not head to audiblepodcast.com slash studyhall to get a free copy when you sign up for a trial membership. As I'm sure my regular viewers are well aware, Audible is the leading source of audiobooks and spoken word entertainment with over 100,000 titles to choose from. Did you know that they've got well over a dozen different recordings of Treasure Island, abridged, unabridged, from a variety of different narrators, including Alfred Molina, AKA Dr. Octopus from the Spider-Man movies, and of course the original Orson Welles radio dramatization. Like I said, one of these can be yours for free to keep when you sign up for a free trial membership, audiblepodcast.com slash studyhall. And, you know, every sign-up helps support the show. Get that booty. If you want to properly enjoy Treasure Island, whether you're reading it or listening to it, make sure you look up the original painted illustrations by N.C. Wyeth, which are just beautiful. Anybody who doesn't think illustration counts as a fine art because it's done commercially should be beaten upside the head with a copy of Treasure Island, one of the big hardcover ones, because his stuff is amazing. 
Under the rather gruesome painting is The Raft of the Medusa by Theodore Jericho, which famously depicts the aftermath of a horrible shipwreck that took place off the coast of Mauritania. 147 people were cast adrift, and by the time help came, like two weeks later, only 15 of them were left because of starvation, dehydration, and cannibalism. Gross. This painting is pretty famous, and it's paid homage to here and there. One of these places being the cover of the Pogues album, Rum, Sodomy, and the Lash, which, if the name isn't indication of enough, is excellent music while partaking of various pirate-like activities. The Pogues are Irish folk punk, and what they sing about has a bit in common with pirate sea shanties. You know, in terms of subject matter, lots of drinking and fighting and pining for women who probably left them on account of all the drinking and fighting. The name Rum, Sodomy, and the Lash is taken from a quote describing traditions in the British Navy. It's often misattributed to Winston Churchill, but the earliest instance was in the diary of British author and diplomat Harold Nicholson. In any case, Rum, Sodomy, and the Lash by the Pogues is an excellent album to put on while drinking rum, though I really can't vouch for how it goes with the other two pastimes. That's all for my Assassin's Creed study hall. Next week, in honor of Halloween, I'm going to discuss a topic that really just doesn't get enough attention in gaming. Zombies. Oh, there's the bell. Until next time, I leave you with this pirate joke. A pirate walks into a bar. He's got a steering wheel sticking out of his crotch. Bartender says, hey, what's that steering wheel for? And the pirate goes, Yar, I was in a car accident. Call an ambulance. Har har har, he was seriously injured. <laughs>